Hello, Mr. Zonker here. We've been talking a little bit about irrational numbers, like the square root of two, for example, and how the decimal uh, expands forever and ever without a pattern, and we can't really know exactly what those values are uh, in math terms, but we can do a pretty good job of approximating them for our purposes, and that's what we're gonna do here. I'm sure this is familiar, but just as a reminder, the square root is basically the inverse or opposite of a square. For example, if we had three squared, that's three times three, which equals nine. The square root of nine is saying what number squared equals nine, in this case would be three. So square root, opposite of square. So the first thing we could do to make a, a good estimation is find the integers that the square root is between. And what we're gonna do for that is find the perfect square roots that come before and after. Just as a reminder, a perfect square root means that there is some number squared goes into it exactly, uh, like one times one is one, so one is a square perfect square root. Two times two is four, four is a perfect square root. Um, let's take a look at this example, square root of 12. So I'm thinking of perfect square roots that come before and after, and my mind comes to the square root of nine, and the square root of 16. We could see that 12 is directly in between 9 and 16. So if we take those actual values, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, we can say that square root of 12 will be somewhere between 3 and 4. And that's what we're looking for here, the two integers that square root of 12 is in between. Let's take a look at square root of 41. Okay, well, I might not know exactly, but let me try. Five times five is 25. Well, that's not, that's not too close. What about six times six? Six times six is 36. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna say square root of 36, and then seven times seven is 49. So we'll do the square root of 49. 41 is right in between those two numbers, 36 and 49. So we can take those number values and say square root of 41 is between six and seven. Lastly, let's look at this negative square root of 8. Negatives are treated a little bit differently, but the same basic concept. Uh, when I see 8, I know 2 times 2 is 4. 4 is pretty close. I'm going to say negative square root of 4, and you'll see why I put it over here in the first place. And then 5, uh, sorry, 3 times 3 is 9, so I'm going to do negative square root of nine, and notice I put my bigger square root to the left because when we're going the opposite way on a number line, the, ne the bigger negatives are always to the left here. And uh, we can see eight is right in between four and nine, so the integers that this is gonna be between are negative three and negative two. I know what you're thinking, that's not good enough. And I hear you, just because we know what integers a value is between, uh, maybe, maybe we can get a little bit more specific. So, here we're gonna estimate the value and try to get a little more detailed uh, by giving our best estimate with a decimal place. So, we're gonna do the same thing as before, find the perfect square roots before and after. Then we're gonna ask ourselves, which is closer to the square root and kind of give our best estimate from there. So here we've got this square root of 11. Uh, again, before and after, it looks like I'd probably have square root of nine and square root of 16, which means that it's gonna be between three and four. When I look back here, I see that nine is only two spaces away from 11, nine, 10, 11, and then 16 is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 that looks like it's gonna be about five spaces. We can see it's much closer to the nine. Now it's not super close, so I'd say a pretty good estimate for this might be about 3.3. .3. It's closer to the three, uh, but still not too far away. And if you said maybe 3.2, 3.4, that would not be a bad estimate, just getting a little bit more specific. Here we've got square root of 79. Square root before that, see if you can guess it. Square root of 64 and square root of 81. That would be between the numbers eight and nine. 
Let's see here. We've got 64 to 79. That's pretty far away. 79 is pretty darn close to 81. So whatever decimal we pick, we're going to want to make sure that that is really close to the 81. And in that case, it's pretty darn close. I might take a good guess and say, hey, this is probably like 8.8 .8 or 8.9. That would be a pretty good estimate of what that value is going to be. Lastly, we have negative square root of 3. This is going to be in between the negative square root of 1 and negative square root of 4, which would be the integers negative 2 and negative 1. This is an interesting one. It's pretty much uh, pretty close to both of them, but it's a little bit closer to 4. One space away from 4 and two spaces away from 1. So we're going to want to make that closer to the uh, negative 2. And I'm going to say this, this is probably going to be a good estimate would be maybe negative 1.7. You might have said negative 1.8 or somewhere around there. Uh, but, but that would be a pretty good estimate. Again, this process is not perfect. Um, we could always try to multiply and narrow it down even further. But this is going to give us a pretty good estimate, a little bit better than just what numbers it's between. All right, everyone. Hope this video was helpful.